What's going on guys? Welcome back. A few days ago someone sent me a message on Facebook asking me a math question. And I really like this question. It kind of made me happy, if I'm honest. Here's what he had to say. I know that if I have 14 ping pong balls labeled with the integers 1 through 14 and I pull four of them, then there are a thousand and one different combinations it could be. But what is the exact mathematical way to reach that? I know it's something to do with subtracting factorials. All right, now why did I like this question so much? <laughs> well, there are a few reasons. First of all, he knew the answer to his specific question, a thousand and one combinations. And not only that, he knew the general formula that gives you that result. But he still wasn't satisfied. He wanted to know how the formula worked. Why is it that this formula describes what it's claiming to describe? Those are the kind of questions we need to ask if we're to become true mathematical warrior mages. So here's the formula he was talking about. We have a set of n objects. How many different ways can we select k of those objects? Well, that's denoted with c of n k or sync. And it's sometimes denoted with n choose k like this. And the formula is given by n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And I agree with him that this is not very intuitive. It's not immediately apparent why this monstrosity is describing the number of ways we can select k objects from a set of n objects. So I thought what we could do is we could go through this type of calculation without using the formula, instead just trying to calculate it ourselves. A good example of this calculation is given by a deck of cards. I have a deck of 52 cards here, and I want to know how many different ways can I select five of these cards? In other words, how many total five card hands exist? Well, that's described by this formula. It would be C of 52 comma five, or we can also express it as 52 choose five, and the formula gives us 52 factorial over 5 factorial times 52 minus 5 is 47 factorial. And this number comes out to be 2,598,960. So these are the total number of 5 card hands that can be drawn from a deck of 52 cards. All right, so let's try getting this result without using the formula. It's gone. So how do we calculate the number of ways we can select five cards from a deck of 52? Well, we have five positions open for cards to go. Now, out of the 52 cards, one of 52 of them can go in this first position. Now, how many can go in the second position? Well, one of the cards is here, so there are 51 possibilities left to go in that second position. And then after that, two cards are in these positions, so there are 50 cards left. So 50 choices for that slot. And then of course, 49 and 48. So that suggests that the product of these five numbers will give us the total number of possible hands that we could have drawn. And this product is equal to 311,875,200. This is not what we had before, so something is wrong. What's wrong? Well, it's quite simple. In an actual five card hand, there is no first position or second position. There's no order to the cards. You're allowed to shuffle them how you will. So what this number is, is the number of possible five card hands where the order is preserved. We don't care about order though, so we need to account for this. So given some five card hand, how many different ways can we order that single hand? Well, just like before, there are five positions for the cards. Now, in the first position can go one of five cards. In the second position can go one of four cards, then one of three, then two, and then one. This is five factorial, which is 120. That is, given a single hand of five cards, you can order them in 120 different ways, as you have one of five cards that can go in the first spot, one of four in the second, and so on. 
So to get the number we want, we should divide this number by this number. Why is that? Well, remember that division is sort of like taking a large group and breaking it into smaller groups. By taking this number and dividing it by 120, we are taking the set of all five card hands where order matters and breaking that into groups. Within each group is 120 different hands. And all of those hands are just rearrangements or reorders of the same hand, which we consider to be the same hand in an actual game of say poker. And indeed, when we make this division, we do get the same number that the formula gave us. But here's the thing, our expression looks quite different from what the formula gave us. So let's go ahead and see if we can reconcile our own expression with the expression given by the formula. All right, so the formula expression looks like this, 52 factorial over five factorial times 47 factorial. Well, the five factorial is easy to account for because that's 120, and we also divide it by 120. But in our expression, we don't have a 52 factorial nor a 47 factorial, so how do we account for that? Well, what we do have is a product of 52, 51, 50, 49, and 48. And if you wrote these products out, since we're dividing by 47 factorial, every term up to 48 will be canceled out. So it is true that this fraction, 52 factorial over 47 factorial, is in fact 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. As every term less than 48, is canceled by the 47 factorial. So that makes it clear that the general formula for the number of ways to choose five things from a set of 52 things does agree with our own expression. And hopefully this clears up some confusion and maybe grants some intuition about why the combinations formula is the way it is. I tend to think that this is a pretty underrated formula. It has a lot of uses and I don't think it's taught to as many people as it should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it to calculate the probabilities of different hands in five card poker. So let's recap what this formula is and what it tells us. This formula tells us the number of different ways that we can select k objects from a set of n objects. So to calculate the probability of some poker hand, we need to find how many different ways we can get that hand and divide that by the total number of poker hands that there are. So let's start with the easiest one, a royal flush. A royal flush is the 10 through the ace, all of the same suit. So once you have a specific suit, there's only one possible way get a royal flush. So choose one of the four suits. That is the number of royal flushes there are, which is of course four. The probability of a royal flush is four choose one over 52 choose five. That is out of the four suits, choose one of them. And that's the royal flush. And this is just the total number of poker hands that exist. Four choose one is of course four. There are four ways to choose one thing out of a set of four things. And this number we've already calculated it to be. And when we divide these two numbers, we get a probability of 0.000154%. So that is the probability of drawing a royal flush from a deck of 52 cards. All right, let's try one a little more complex. Let's try four of a kind. So for four of a kind, we need all four cards of some face, and then the fifth card can just be whatever. So there are 13 total faces. So we have to choose one of those faces. So 13, choose one. Now we've selected our face. Four cards exist of that face, and we have to choose all four of them. So four, choose four. And finally, we need to make a selection of the final card. Four cards have been used up. 52 minus four is 48. So out of the 48 remaining cards, we have to choose one of them. And we are dividing this 
by the total number of poker hands, which is 52, choose five. Now, 13 choose one is of course just 13. Four choose four is one. There's only one way to take all four of them. Take all four of them. And we need to make that final selection. 48 choose one, 48. And this product comes out to be 624 over. And that gives us a total probability of 0.024%. So the odds of getting a four of a kind is 0.024%. All right, now let's try a straight flush. So that's five cards, all the same suit in order and we're not gonna count a royal flush as being a straight flush here. So how many ways can we get a straight flush? I think a picture is helpful here. I'm gonna draw 13 dots representing the 13 different faces. So we'll say that this first face is the ace and they're in order, ending with the king. So we can select these five or we can select these five and so on until we finally get to the last five. So counting by the first card in each sequence, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sequences we can pick. So to get the total number of straight flushes there are, we first need to pick a suit. So out of the four suits, choose one. And then out of the nine sequences, choose one. And then we divide that by the total number of five card hands. Four choose one is just four, of course. Nine choose one is just nine. And this number is... So we get a probability of 0.00139% for a straight flush. All right, now let's try a full house. So that's three of the same face, and then separately two of the same face. So a three of a kind and a pair in one hand. So first we need to choose a one of the 13 faces. Now that we have that face selected, we need to choose three of the four cards that have that face. And then after that, we need to select a new face out of the 12 that remain. And then we need two of the four cards of that face. And we're gonna divide this by the total number of hands, of course. But for now, let's just calculate this. Let's calculate the frequency. So 13 choose one is of course 13. Four choose three is the same as four choose one. That is four. 12 choose one is of course 12. And four choose two, well, that's not immediately obvious. Let's see, that's four factorial over two factorial times two factorial. So we're gonna get a cancellation so that we have just three times four at the top. So we have 12 at the top. And then one of the two factorials remain, that's two. So we have a six. And that comes out to 3,744. So that's the total number of full houses that we can get. And if we divide that we get a probability of 0.1441% for a full house. And finally, let's try three of a kind. So three of a kind is three cards of the same face and then the two remaining cards can be whatever, but they can't be a pair because then we'd have a full house. So first we need to choose one of the 13 faces. And after that, we need to choose three of the four cards of that face. Then for remaining two cards, we need to choose two of the faces out of the remaining 12. And then once we've made that selection, each of those cards can be of any suit. 
So the selections are choose a face, choose three of the four cards of that face, choose two of the 12 remaining faces. For the first card, choose a suit. For the second card, choose a suit. Now 13 choose one is 13, four choose three is four, 12 choose two, that's not immediately clear, so we'll say that's 12 factorial over two factorial times 10 factorial. Four choose one is four, and four choose one is four. So let's see what this is. This is 11 times 12 over two. So 11 times six, so 66. And that is 54,912. So that gives us a probability of 2.1128%. Notice how much larger this is than a four of a kind. It's a big difference. All right, so there's a lot of different poker hands that we could calculate the probabilities for, but I don't wanna to get too repetitive here and that's not really the point I wanted to demonstrate. The real purpose was to show the intuition behind the formula for combinations and just to show how underappreciated and how useful this expression really is. But anyways, that's going to have to do it for this video. I'll see you guys next time. And then add 66 and two-thirds percents. You always say all men are created equal. But you look at me and you look at small Joe. I got 141 and two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice.